are my favorites. Yes, you are. You know that too, don't you? Okay, so this one is the Uncle Eric's. This is Uncle Eric's. Yes. Are you, are you like messing with our bonding time here? I like to start off a grooming session with a head straight session. Ah! You keep their muzzle straight and level and the dog will hold its head steady. Head straight. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Kind of just reassures my leadership right there. So we're going to start a grooming session off today. And the first thing I'm going to do is a light little mist of the, the solution that has the vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and it also has the citric acid in it and I'm going to brush this into the coat. I'm using a boar nylon brush and I got this at Sally's Beauty Supply. They're about 10 bucks or you can go to amazon.com and get them there. Again these are really nice quality brushes and relatively inexpensive. Anything from a medium to long coat I'm going to use the boar nylon and as I start getting into the short coat or a jacket, and I want to polish the cuticles and lay everything down, I'll use just a straight bore brush. And then I'll help bring out that nice, deep, rich color. Any shine, if your breed has the genetics to be shiny on the coat. Some breeds actually do not want to be shiny. Okay, so once we get all that rubbed into there, that's going to protect the coat against the tools to make sure that we don't break any coat or damage that coat. Also does a really good job with the skin too. Okay, so now we're going to condition these legs so we can do a grooming session on these legs today. So I'm going to do a light little mist on that leg. I'm going to take my boar nylon brush and I'm going to just rotate these hairs and separate the hairs and I'm kind of just rolling my brush from tip to tip and changing the direction of these hairs. And this is working in the apple cider vinegar, the distilled water, and the citric acid into this coat, down to the skin, to make it nice and strong and protect it against any damage that could be done with tools. Tools could be brushes, combs, uh, or any stripping knives or anything like that. Now, the other thing too is you're gonna see that as you start to do this, you're gonna get some really super strong hairs on those harder guard hairs. And that's what's gonna give you the beautiful finish on these furnishings here. Um, what you usually have is broken coat on these legs. And the only thing left is that soft, ugly stuff that's not very nice looking when you're trying to do a good grooming session. I'm using my three-way comb now, and the three-way comb is helping me separate these hairs to make sure there's no clumps. And I'm using the wide side. That I always start off with the wide side, and that'll allow me to separate those hairs and not damage any of those hairs that are worth their weight in gold there. So you can see I'm separating these hairs. Then I can go to a medium which is the medium middle part of this comb. And I'm gonna separate all those hairs there. Then I go to the fine side, just to make sure that we have everything separated. This comb is absolutely amazing. It just, it's, a, it's heavier than most combs because that's gonna help you get through these coats. And it's not a, it's a type of metal that is extremely strong and it's not conductive of electricity. Like a lot of the other people make combs that just conduct a lot of electricity and that's not good. And uh, the other thing about this is it has a special finish that's unique to this comb only. 
And with this comb, you're able to get through without damaging really delicate hairs. So whether you're doing some really rough stuff or you're just trying to really baby these hairs, this is a beautiful comb to do that with. Okay, then I can come back with the wide side, turn these hairs around, and see what I have to work with for today. Nice furnishings. Okay, let's start our grooming session. Cut. Okay, so the next area we're gonna work on, well actually this is my start. I normally work on my dog six days a week. Today is Tuesday, and so Tuesday we're gonna work on top lines. I normally give the dogs off on Monday. I'm gonna do a light little mist of the spray that has the apple cider vinegar solution, distilled water, and the citric acid. And that's gonna help protect this coat. Okay, I'm taking my boar nylon brush and I'm brushing all the hairs in the direction the hair grows. You're gonna see a drastic change over the next couple of days with this dog. So the first thing that I'm gonna work on is my top line. I'm gonna take my boar nylon brush, I'm gonna work it 90 degrees from the direction the way the hair grows. So that would be to the, to the right angle here. And as I pull this across, I wanna see what hairs stick out. And you'll notice that this sticks out here, then it comes in, then it sticks out, then it comes in, then it sticks out, comes in. And what we really want here is a straight line, not all this jagged stuff. And that's gonna give you the perfect top line for your breed right there. The first tool we're going to use is gonna be the metal stone. And it has a foam rubber handle with very high quality steel and it, a rough edge here that will help find just the right hairs. And we're gonna come in and look for the tips of the longest hairs, and those are the only ones we're gonna pull. Again, don't try to fix this in one session. You wanna just pull some of those longer hairs, and we're eventually, over a period of time, gonna make it so this is one straight line right here. Any place where you have hairs that are long is when you brush your hair back, is gonna be a high spot. Any place where it digs in is gonna be a low spot. So eventually we're gonna have that top line looking perfect. Now, once we get the top line, then I'm gonna to start to work on my body a little bit. And the way I'm gonna do the body is I'm gonna come down another layer lower. And again, I'm gonna take all these hairs at a 90 degree angle. And you can see it sticks up right really high here and then it comes up and then it comes down and it comes up like this. I wanna make another straight line here. So I take just the tips of my metal, metal stone and I pull some of these longer hairs. Just the tips, pull some of these longer hairs here. Just the tips, pull some of these longer hairs here. Then I'm gonna brush this down in the direction that it grows. Super easy to do. If it sticks up, take it off. Um, if you have dogs that you use shears on, you can do the same technique. The only difference is instead of pulling, you'll be trimming. Okay, so took my hair to 90 degrees. I have a bunch of bulky stuff here that I'm gonna take off. This right here. And then I'm gonna brush this down. And look at how nice and smooth that hair lays down once you remove those problem hairs. Okay, now I'm gonna come in a little bit lower. And take these hairs out, just the longer ones that are sticking out. This technique can be used on terriers, on setters, on spaniels. I mean, all kinds of different breeds there. Okay, then I'm gonna brush this down. Fortunately, he likes how handsome he is in the mirror right there. Now, once you start to get to this lower spot, it gets a little tougher. So I'm gonna grab the skin and I'm gonna rotate it 
brush this 90 degrees and then take just the tips of these hairs. And you notice that if I just do this lightly here and I'm only taking those little bit longer hairs, it doesn't affect him. Now for this particular breed, we want length of body. So a lot of people get used to leaving hair like this rolling in like they're working on a Schnauzer or a Wire Fox Terrier. This is not a Wire Fox Terrier. This is not a Schnauzer. This dog needs to be longer in body and appear racy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tips and just find the finest hairs and start working this back, bringing this leg back to here. Bringing this to the tuck up and bringing this back lengthens that body. But if we do this like a wire fox terrier or a miniature schnauzer where we roll this into this, that's gonna shorten the body and we don't want that on an Irish. Okay, so I'm gonna start working these, good. And again, this is gonna take many months to get this just right. What I'm doing is a procedure that's called rolling coat. And when I roll coat, I'm creating many, many layers of hair. And within those many layers of hair, they come in every few weeks. So when the judges fill this coat, it would have a beautiful density and the dog could be shown year round because it, you're gonna take off those longer hairs. Okay. So that's the basic thing that you're gonna do on a Tuesday. You can see it didn't take that long. I'm gonna do both sides of the dog. Then on Wednesdays, I'm gonna work on another part of the dog. Let's say we're gonna go ahead on Wednesday, work on the neck and shoulders. So we'll do that in the next video. Cut. All my hair over to a 90 degree angle, just like this. And that's gonna show you what the hairs look like on that top line. Now, those hairs that are sticking out longer here are gonna be problem hairs. Longer, shorter, longer, shorter, longer. Anything longer is gonna be a high spot in the top line. Anything that dips in will look like a hole. So with our grooming session, what we wanna do is we wanna work only on the longest hairs. Those are the only ones we wanna do. We'll just take the tips. And don't try to make the dog look perfect in one session. Just work a little bit at a time and eventually you'll have lots of layers. If you try to fix this in one grooming session, then what's gonna happen is all that hair is gonna break through the skin and come out all at one time and you're gonna always have that same problem. So and then as soon as we do that, we're gonna go ahead and brush this back brush it in the direction that the hair grows. And now we're gonna come in a, just a little bit lower, same thing, 90 degrees. And you can see all those hairs sticking out and holes and everything. So all we're gonna focus on are the longest hairs, just taking those tips. I'm not worried about the shorter ones at this point. Anything sticking up higher. And then I'm gonna brush this down. Then I'll come down a little bit lower. And you can see just a few hairs sticking up and that's all we're gonna work on. The toughest thing is trying not to go too deep. You only want just a few, uh, uh, head straight. Just the tips of those hairs. And people try to overgroom. They wanna fix everything. This is not a poodle. You're not gonna scissor this dog and make it perfect. What you wanna do is you're planting seeds to a garden and you want that garden to be nice and dense and beautiful and colorful. So in order to do that, that takes time. You have to cultivate that. And then when those seeds start to break through the surface there and you start to get a flower, then you take care of it from there. But don't rush at that. Okay, so you can see how nice and smooth all that is laying against the body right there. Now, once we get to this spot, this is a little more difficult. So I'm gonna grab the skin and I'm gonna rotate the skin over the dog's back and I'm gonna pull just a few hairs and drop that down. And what this is gonna do is wrap this down underneath the body. And I'm gonna do this for this whole, whole undercarriage here. And since this is an Irish Terrier, I wanna lengthen this body to make the dog appear racy. 
And in order to do that, unlike miniature schnauzers and unlike wire fox terriers, I don't want to leave this furnishings and rolling this gently into this underline right here. What I want to do is I want to start working this line back. And I'm only taking a couple of hairs at a time. And I'm working this line up into this tuck up. I want this nice and high. Okay, and then I'll brush this down and I'll work on that again next week. Now one of the things you wanna to try to keep in mind when you look at this dog for balance is whatever angle, head straight, whatever angle you have coming in from this neck going into the withers, head straight, you want the same angle on the bottom. So this angle and this angle should match and that's gonna create balance right there. Then when we take our comb through the center line of this body, that should be where your pro sternum is, the furthest point sticking out. And then when you take this comb going back, ah, ah, head straight, put your foot down, thank you. Then when we take this comb straight back, that should be where your point of your butt sticks out, right where the center line of that dog is. Okay, so that's it for our Tuesday grooming session right here. Ne uh, tomorrow we'll work on Wednesday, which will be neck and blending into the shoulders. Cut. Okay, so the next area we're gonna work on is gonna be the neck and shoulders. So fine little mist. And I'm gonna brush all this hair in the direction that it goes and that feels so good, yes it does. Now, uh, when you're gonna do a grooming session on Irish for the neck, we gotta think about what our goals are going to be. And we want this strong neck to blend into these shoulders. You have like a cowlick line right here, and where that cowlick is, all this in here should be just color but not length of hair. So all this stuff has to come off of here. And then you want this, these guard hairs here to work in this direction, and it should be a line. It should not be length of hair blending right into this head right there. So that's what our goal is going to be here. Then none of this is going to be length of hair. This is not a schnauzer. We've got to take this down so you have just color but no length in here at all. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to brush our hair in the direction that it grows. And then we're going to go 90 degrees and see what sticks up. And then we take the metal tool and we take off just the tips. 90 degrees. And you can see all that bushy stuff sticking up there. We'll take that off. 90 degrees. You can see all that bushy stuff sticking up there. Now again, do not try to do this in one session. You want to do this over time so you have many, many layers and you don't have a bunch of hair just growing in all at once. This metal stone works so good at that. Then once we get into the area where we're going to blend into the neck, then we can take just the tip of the stone and we're going to blend this into the neck here. And we're just taking the tips of those hairs and working that back. And then brush this down. And you can see how this really makes a nice transition going from this neck into the shoulders here. Now this is a little too much here, but he doesn't really have any layers underneath that. So blending this in, we have to be real careful until we start creating some of those layers. Otherwise we could make some holes in there. We don't want to do that. And that's the advantage of rolling a coat versus just stripping hair. Okay, you can see all that sticking up there. And I'm going to take this and just take some of those longer hairs. I'm trying to make this transition nice and smooth because an iris should, this neck should flow into here and there should not be any space or divot or anything behind where the withers are at. And he doesn't have that, but he just has too much hair there. And a lot of times people create that problem because what they try to do is they try to build the height up right here and when they do that, they let the hair grow. And that's not what you want to do. You want to create density in there. And you can see how much smoother that is now.
Okay. All right. Cut. So I'm going to take the tip of this metal stone and I'm just pulling on the tips here and I'm getting rid of all these hairs that are inside here on the inside of this cowlick line right here. So everything inside here is going to be to the skin and as you can see that does not bother him at all and I'm just taking the tips and grabbing the tips of those hairs and pulling this out and that's coming out without any effort or any problems or him being uncomfortable. Uh, another tool that's really good for close-up work like that is I'll come in with the three-way and the three-way has a medium, a fine, and also on the tip and I'll work this in here to get some of these fine hairs. Once you start rolling the coat on this neck and um, you know, like with Westies or Scotties or Irish or wires, um, then this tool is an excellent tool to maintain it. Right now I'm getting rid of all this soft fuzzy stuff and I'm taking this right down to the skin and as you can see it doesn't hurt him at all. And this dog, I was told, um, was not a good <laughs> dog to, to work on here because he wants to fight you. But doing that uh, head straight session and using the right tools, um, he's not going to fight me with that. Then once I start getting all this stuff stripped out here, then I want to take this at a 90 degree angle here and I'm exposing the longest hairs here and I'm taking just the tip of this tool and working some of these longer hairs and I'm going to blend this hair from the back of his neck into the front of the neck right here. Then I'll come in with the three-way and use the medium side first and I will just gently blend the rest of these hairs going from longer to almost nothing. And that makes some really nice smooth transitions. I'm not cutting the hair, I'm actually pulling from the root. I see a lot of people where they're using tools and they're doing this really delicate work here and this skin is just all scarred up, bloody. Um, that's because these tools are very uncomfortable and as you can see I'm working in really sensitive areas on this dog and he's not fighting this at all. Now a little trick for this area here next to the pro sternum is I'm going to put my thumb in next to the pro sternum and I lift the skin up and that allows me to get into those hard sensitive areas in here to pull this hair and when I let this go you can see how that just gently goes right along with the skin where normally it's very difficult for me to get into there. Okay, go ahead and cut and I'll finish this off and then we'll go. So I'm using the tip here and the tip is allowing me to get into a really difficult area where normally the dog is going to fight you where you have these two areas coming together underneath the ear. But by just grabbing these tips, using the tip of the metal stone, I'm able to whittle this down. Ah, ah, put that head down. When a dog puts its muzzle up, he's trying to exert dominance right there. Head straight. Good job. And your key is to not let him get away with that. And you can see I'm taking the tip of the metal stone and my thumb, and I'm only taking grabbing on these tips. And that's not going to hurt the dog, and it's not going to make him fight that. But if I come in too tight, then that's taking too much hair, and that's going to pull and be uncomfortable for him. So just work on these tips, and this tool's great for this. The metal three-way is also really good for this, because in here, ah, uh -uh, head straight. In here, I can use this tip to get into these really hard, difficult places to reach, like right in the crevice in here underneath this ear. And then I can go back to just blending this into the front. So without having to use and switch to another tool, I can do two jobs at once while this tool is in my hand. And you can see how this is just whittling this hair right off. It's so easy. The tool does all the work. Ah, ah head straight. See how beautiful this is laying now? Cut. All right, I'll finish this off. Okay. Okay, so one of the keys is to not put pressure on the throat here. 
like most of the time you'd have this on here and that pressure goes on the throat that's being rude to the dog so i'm going to take my thumb slide it here and i'm right-handed so i need to get in here with my right hand but i'm not letting any pressure go on this throat here and that way it's not being rude to the dog and i'm taking just these tips and it's going to be time consuming but i'm going to whittle this down and you notice he's not fighting me on this because i'm only taking these tips right here you just have to be patient and work this out this tool is excellent for these hard to reach areas and this is the area here where people are usually having a problem because it's like what direction do you pull and if you pull the tips it doesn't make a difference and you just sit there and keep it's going to take some time but you just keep pulling the tips until you have this whittled down to where you need it so don't be in a rush just pull the tips of these hairs be patient let the tool do the work and you will get there Okay, so I'm just pulling the tips on the hairs on the back of the head here, working this into the neck. As you can see, these hairs growing in here behind the ears. So I'm cleaning this out. And that's where this tool does a great job, right at the base of the ear. I'm pulling just the tips of these hairs and blending this head into this ear, which is really going to be pretty, as you can see that right there. And look at how nice that blends that right behind the ear right there. So now I just got to work some of this stuff down. Part of the key in working into these sensitive areas is trying to figure out a way to keep this muzzle straight ah, ah, on an untrained dog and keep the neck free and clear. Because if the neck is being choked, then the dog's going to fight you even more. But if you can adjust your hand so you can keep that neck free and clear you'll get less fight out of the dog Bless you. Ah. so all my pressure is on the back of the head not in the neck and you'll be able to work these very sensitive areas without the dog fighting you see so blending this right into this ear 90 degrees grab those tips 90 degrees grab those tips and then that will just make that look so nice and natural as it blends this neck from the back of the neck to the front of the neck to blend this neck nice we're going to treat this just like a top line everything goes over 90 degrees and all this little stuff we're just going to take off all these little fuzzies right here right into the shoulder 90 degrees here you can see these hairs sticking up and I'm just taking the tips all the little stuff sticking up and that's going to give that a nice natural looking neck you can see how beautiful that is and then I'm going to take my finishing tool and I'm just going to blend in my transitions to really make this look natural. And it's just going to take out those wild hairs. So I can blend the back of the neck into the front of the neck. And you're going to see how natural and gorgeous this is going to look. Okay, so this is normally a really sensitive area for the dogs too, but if you're using this tool and you're just taking the tips of these hairs, then they don't mind that. They'll even help you out a little bit here. So you can see I'm just whittling this down. I'm just taking the tips, really sensitive areas, and I'm not having a problem with this dog. He's actually helping me a little bit, and that's a cute little sit there too. Okay, that was good, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, 
And for those of you who have ever worked on an Irish before, you would be able to appreciate that I'm pulling these hairs on his chest and he's not either trying to bite me or fighting me. Yes, that's a good boy. You're doing so good. Yes, so good. Yes, good boy. Good boy. I am so proud of you. Big boy. Yes, that's so good. That's so good. Yes. Isn't that cool? Okay, so this is just going to be like the top line. You want to make this tail just right. You bring everything over 90 degrees. And you pull the longest hairs. Everything sticking up. You can just go basically go around the tail like in a big circle. You can see these hairs sticking up. Again, you don't have to make this tail perfect in one session. Although this dog's getting ready for a show, so I'll probably take off a little more than I normally would. Okay, so 90 degrees a little bit more. You can see all this stuff sticking up, so we're going to go ahead and take that off. This makes it so easy to figure out what hairs to take off. There's no guesswork whatsoever. Okay, then I'm going to take 90 degrees again. Coming back from towards the bottom. You can see all this hair sticking up. Again, no guesswork on what hairs to remove. This shows all the problem hairs that are ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna brush this down. Bring it over this way. See all those hairs sticking out? Brush this back. degrees that way you can see all these hairs sticking up here now as you get towards the tip here it's going to be a little more sensitive on the dog so I'm going to take fewer hairs and I'm going to use just the tip of the tool just to make sure that I'm not pulling too many hairs at a time because this is more sensitive back here you always need to be aware of their sensitivity and that'll make for better grooming sessions in the future if you try to pull too much too quickly you'll get your job done faster but in reality it will take longer in the future because the dogs won't like that and they'll learn to start to fight that so take your time do short grooming sessions and only pull a few hairs at a time it may not look perfect now but in the future this tail will look drop dead gorgeous. Okay, so we want to follow these little swirls here. We're taking just the tips. These are called the donuts. And we just follow this little swirl all the way around. And what we want to do is we want to find a straight line in here where that's where this stuff will end pretty much like the neck and this should be a straight line right through the center line of this leg so we want to pull delicately with just just the tips here And this should be a nice clean line. You can see how it's too long 
in length of the hair right here. We want this to be pretty much like what we did with the neck. You have to be really patient when doing the rear area because it's really sensitive and the dogs don't like it. So you're only pulling just a little bit of hair at a time. Give yourself plenty of time to do the rears. Don't try to rush this. You're gonna follow the contour of this back leg. That'll give you your angulation from the side. Now once we get this completely, stand. You're gonna take your hair from the inside of this leg here, and as we bring this up, this is gonna be a straight line here. So wherever this comb touches on the leg, that's as high as that's going to go. So all this hair has to come out. It's only going to go to right where that leg touches the ends or that comb touches the inside right there. So all the rest of this has to come out. So this will be all clean in here. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the shelf on the butt of the terrier here. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take this three way comb and we're going to bring everything over 90 degrees like so. Then I'm gonna take the long hairs that are sticking up and take those off. Then I'll take my brush and brush this back. And now you can see this beautiful shelf that's starting to form here. And it looks nice and natural. So we'll clean this up a little more, 90 degrees like that. You see these hairs sticking up? We'll go ahead and take the tips of these. Brush this back, and you see a beautiful natural shelf starting to form right there. And this is something that we're going to do over a period of time. Bring that out like so. Bring this back, and look at how nice and natural that looks. Tail up. Come on, put your tail up. And you see a beautiful shelf and how this hair just wraps around this tail right here. We got a little clump right there. Let's work that down. A little bulky there. You're really starting to see the body of this dog up here. And all we're doing is moving these hairs 90 degrees over from the way they grow. And taking just the tips. I love how this just naturally makes this shelf because I hate it when I see people where they just really cut into this hair here and it looks artificial. I want it to look natural right here. And this is the best way to get that shelf on that butt right there. Put this up. Look at that. Really nice. Okay, now what we're gonna do is work these donuts. That's what these swirls are called right here. Look at how beautiful that just wraps around here. You get a nice natural shelf and then coming into the rear here. Okay, cut. Okay, so we're gonna groom some of these hairs on the back leg. 
I'm taking hair from the other side and I'm bringing everything around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the longest hairs all the way around and just make that nice and even. Then I'm going to take this 90 degrees this way and take my longest hairs and go straight down. And then back again, 90 degrees, and bring this straight down. Not very many there. Then when I bring this straight down this way, that makes it absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Same thing with these hairs. Bring these straight out like this. And then I'm gonna trim these straight down, making a straight line right through here. All this should be nice and straight and even. So these are sticking out here. So I'll take some of these out. Bring these down. And when you trim like that, that gives you perfect angulation. You notice how nice Notice how nice and rounded this is here with this leg. That's because I'm not trimming from this part. I'm bringing the hair around like this and trimming the hairs from the side. And that makes that perfect angulation right there. Okay, so now that we've done the top line, most of the body, shoulders, and the front, now we're gonna move into the headpiece here. And the headpiece is gonna start right here where the neck joins the head. And we're gonna start off whittling these ears down. You can see all this furry stuff on these ears. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, so I can put my fingers underneath the noose and I want the neck free and clear. If the neck has any pressure on it, the dog's gonna fight anymore. And then, so that's kind of my goal as far as what I want to do with this. Then I'm going to grab an ear and I'm going to use the metal stone and I'm going to grab just the tips and I'm going to just start whittling this down until I get a smooth leathery looking ear with no fuzz on it. Then once I get to that point, I'm going to come in with the tip of the tool and I'm going to edge it by using just the tip following the, the leathers around. Now, if the dog wants to fight me a little bit, then I'll just say head straight, and I put pressure on the back of that head, keeping the neck free and clear, and that lets me put myself in a leadership position so the dog's not gonna fight me. Can you get in tight? Or do you need to switch to the other one now? This is a great finishing tool. I don't want anything sticking out past this eye right here. Let's brush this forward. So from the corner of this eye, straight back should be nice and smooth. And for this, I'm using primarily just the tip. Ah, quit. And again, anytime you have a breed that's very dominant and you start working on the head, that's when they're going to fight you the most. Because it's like, how dare you do that? Head straight. Head straight. Good boy. Nice and easy. Very nice. Very proud of you. Good. So I'm just bringing this down. I don't want to dig anything in here. I don't want to change any angles. I just want to make this as flat as possible on the side of this head. And then blend this into the neck. Another little tip is if you let a dog put its muzzle up, then it's going to fight you more because it's claiming this territory right here. 
So when you're working on the headpiece, try to keep that muzzle as level as possible. Now I'll flip back and forth, work with the metal stone a little bit, and the metal stone, ah, it's gonna help me just with these tips right here, ah, ah. And I wanna go straight down so I don't make a divot in here. Bring this forward. This is gonna make that eyebrow. Ah, ah. So now as it's getting, ah, ah, don't put that muzzle up. Now as it's getting more sensitive, ah, ah. I'm just gonna use the tip of the stone, head straight. Put that muzzle down. Good, good boy. As you can see, just the tip of that stone. And I'm just bringing this to the corner of this eye. Then I'll brush this forward. This is gonna give you a really nice eyebrow when this is finished. But you gotta be careful that you're just taking the tips of these. That way you'll make this look natural. If you dig too deep, then what's going to happen is you're going to end up digging this out, and that's going to look horrible. Ah. Okay, so now I'm going to take the top of this head, everything over this way, and I want to make this straight down. Ah, 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 quit, quit, get that muzzle down, get that muzzle down, stand, get that muzzle down, and I'm coming straight down, and then when I brush forward, that's going to give me a beautiful eyebrow right there, just like that, straight down, brush 90 degrees over like this, Straight down, brush this forward, and you can see that beautiful brow starting to come in right over the top of that there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to separate this eyebrow off to the side, and we're going to start to work on the head planes. Now the head planes... should be equal. So wherever, ah, uh, uh, put that muzzle down, put it down, head straight, head straight. So wherever this plane is, this muzzle should be similar to that. So what I need to do is I need to bring everything over to one side like this, and I'm going to take just tips. Brush this back, and then I'm going to brush this straight up in between the eyes, separating that brow hair, and I'm going to make a fan. So this right here will be a fan. So I'm going to just take this in a circular motion, right where the stop is at. Ah, 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 Get that eyebrow hair out of there. And I want this to come in as like a little fan right here. Once you get this eyebrow started, then you can come in at the top and start rolling these hairs because you want to create some density in here. You don't want to do too much at one time because you want many layers so you can have really beautiful eyebrows. 
then if you're looking down on the head you can come in like this and take the tip and just shape this eyebrow anything that's forward of the corner of that eye can be pulled aside like this and you whittle this down You don't want this completely taken out. You want to have that little fan right there. But you don't want anything right in fr ah! front of this eye. And you can see that eyebrow starting to form really nice there. So you can see we've done a little bit on this side. And this is all starting to blend in nice and natural here. We haven't done anything on that side. And you can see how that just has no shape, no lines whatsoever. A couple of key things on working on the head is that, first of all, you want to use the, that spray, which is the apple cider vinegar and the citric acid. And you want to spray this on a daily basis to help train this hair go forward just like that. The other thing you want to do is you want to go in here and find out where you have some of these whiskers and once a week go in and try to find a whisker come in with your metal stone go to the base and pull that whisker out and the dog won't fight you but if you pull from the tip they will fight you so you want to come in find that whisker and then pull and they won't fight you on that don't do all of them all at one time because if you do that then they'll probably start to fight you now another thing too is if you want this shape to look really really good then you're going to want to take all your hair on the top lip and bring this up and the reason for that is because this right here is what pushes all that hair out so you want to take this, bring this forward on this bottom lip, and you want to take just the tips with the tip of this and get that close to that lip right there. And what this will do is this will keep that hair from st sticking up and pushing your upper hair out. And this will lay this a lot closer to the head this way. Stop. Head straight. So as I brush this, you'll see how that blends and rolls nicely into that bottom. Because before, that lower lip hair was pushing this out. And then you get more of a messy look like you got on that side right there. Okay, so we're going to get this following right to the neck here. And all these little scraggly hairs. Uh -uh, head straight. Now, one little secret is a lot of times people will start at the base here and clean this ear completely. I don't like to do that. What I like to do is where the natural bend is on this ear, I have the headpiece going and blending into that ear right there. I don't want to create too much of a divot right inside here. So, ah, 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 ah. get straight. Good. And I'm gently just taking the tips. The more you use just the tip of this tool, the less the dog's going to fight you because you're only grabbing a few hairs at a time and you're just working your way down this leather. But sometimes if you use this tool more conventional style or other tools that are available and you come in like this, the dogs resist that a little bit more. So come in like this, use only the tip of this tool when you're in sensitive areas and you will only grab a few hairs at a time and the ah, 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 ah. anytime you're working on a dog's head that doesn't totally respect you or trust you that's not going to be a good combination anyway because you're in an area where you're saying i'm in charge of you and the dog says no you haven't earned that yet okay so you can see that that's starting to come off there then i'm going to come in and i'm going to edge this ear where I'm just going to take the tip and go all the way around the edge of this dog's ear. 
and clean all this stuff out of here. Quit. Quit. Good boy. Good boy. Are you done? You don't like the towel? Okay. Take the towel off. <laughs> Kick it out. It's Irish towel, it's a green towel. Wow, that looks gorgeous right there. You get that? Mm -hmm. You can see how natural that looks when you trim like that.